If you were a woodworker in the 18th and 19th century, you probably would have owned just three planes. A medium length plane, like this four plane, would have handled all your rough dimensioning and basic stock preparation. Then you would have had a longer and more precise jointer plane for shooting edges, leveling off tabletops, generally making things straight and square. And then you would have finished up with a short smoothing plane like this to get your final surface on the wood. Now, I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but I have built furniture with this exact kit of planes, and it totally works. But if these three planes is really all you need, how in the world did this happen? Stanley made their planes in sizes 1 through 8, plus three more in between sizes, for a grand total of 11 bench planes. Now, did Stanley actually think they were going to sell anybody 11 planes? Of course not. Almost no one could have afforded the whole set to begin with. But understanding all these different sizes, it isn't actually about woodworking. It's about marketing. Stanley wasn't even trying to create one set of planes that every craftsman would buy. They were trying to dominate the entire hand plane market by satisfying every conceivable demand with a different model of hand plane. Now, believe it or not, we can actually relate all of these planes back to our three historical planes. And that's how we're going to understand the whole Stanley line. Not by looking at them one at a time, but by breaking them up into three groups. Our first group of planes is the smoothers. These are small, short planes meant for getting the final surface on a piece of wood. Now, the most important plane in the smoothing group is the number four. This was one of the most popular planes that Stanley ever produced, and it's my personal favorite. It's a great size to handle a lot of shop tasks, and it's not too heavy, so you can use it all day long without getting tired. But Stanley wasn't satisfied just making this plane. It mostly copied the size of the most common wooden smoothing plane. They wanted a lot more than that. They produced many smaller sizes of smoothing plane, like this number three over here, and also the number two and the number one. Those planes are super tiny. They're also rare and expensive, and I don't own them. Stanley made these because even though this smoothing plane was common, it wasn't the only kind out there. A lot of craftsmen and a lot of trades would have been familiar with a much smaller smoothing plane, like this tiny little guy over here. What Stanley wanted to do was create a plane for every craftsman in every situation. No matter what you were used to, they had something, from a regular size all the way down to super tiny. But that brings us up to the four and a half over here, which is really quite a bit bigger and heavier than the number four. And also the number is weird. Why do they call it a four and a half? Well, Stanley created their sizes one through eight, and then they realized there were other little parts of the market, other niches that they wanted to get in and crush the competition. So they'd come up with a different size plane and then give it a fractional name. That's where the four and a half came from. Here, Stanley was competing with Scottish infill plane makers. An infill is a very fancy type of plane. It's got a metal body, usually steel, it's filled with wood, and they tend to be wide, very heavy planes, great for precise work. Craftsmen loved these for smoothing, and a lot of craftspeople thought that the weight of the plane had a lot to do with it. They also liked the wide blade. That meant that you could get a tabletop or a large piece done with fewer strokes. So Stanley wanted to do their best to copy that infill smoothing style. They brought out the four and a half. It's larger and wider and significantly heavier. So it does basically the same thing that an infill plane does, but it's inside of Stanley's line, and they could offer it at a competitive price. Our second family of planes is the Jack Four Plane family. In this case, four is spelled F-O-R-E, and it's a contraction of the word B4, meaning it was the plane used before all the other planes. Depending on where and when you're talking about, Jack and Four mean essentially the same thing. It meant a medium length plane that was used for rough stock preparation and taking off a lot of wood when you were redimensioning something. Stanley, of course, made a whole range of planes in this size, and just like in the smoothing family, there's one plane that needs special attention, the number five. In fact, the number five is so good, we should talk about it all by itself. Why don't you meet me down at the end of the bench? The number five jack is probably the most important plane Stanley ever made, and it's definitely the most popular. There was a period in American history where every single carpenter, furniture maker, and even homeowner had a number five. And the reason for that is the plane's unbelievable versatility. When Stanley designed the size and shape of this plane, they just crushed it. It's the exact same width as a number four, but a bit longer. 
So it'll produce a fine surface, but that longer sole will really help if you're trying to true things up or create a straight line. Now, another secret to these planes is there's at least two distinct ways that you can set them up. And I've got two examples here to show you. This one, this is just a Victor plane. It's a lower cost plane made by Stanley, still really just as good as their main line. And I've set this one up as a traditional four plane. You can see here the mouth is very wide and the iron has a ton of camber curvature to it. That makes this a super aggressive plane, like an antique wooden four plane would be. You can hog off huge bites of wood with this, and it doesn't even take shavings, it more like takes chips. You can take almost an eighth of an inch per pass with this plane, which makes it great when you need to waste away a lot of material really quickly. Now, the other way you can set up a number five is a fine setup like you would with a smoothing plane, and I've got that with this plane here. You can see the mouth is very, very small, and the blade is mostly straight. It only has a tiny bit of camber to it. That means that this plane will work as a smoothing plane. It's a little bit long, but it'll get the job done, and it leaves a really nice surface. The longer sole also lets you do things like shoot edges or level tabletops. If you don't own a jointer yet, this is a good choice, or if you do a lot of small and medium size work, this will handle jointing tasks on smaller boards, but it's not nearly as big or cumbersome as a big jointer plane. Those can be really tough to handle in the shop. So I would even say if you're only gonna have one plane, a number five might be the perfect place to start. It wouldn't even be unreasonable to own two of them. I do. Stanley had a brilliant design with the number five, but of course they weren't satisfied with that and they wanted to make a whole range of planes in the Jack plane family. Going down from the number five, they made the five and a quarter, which is actually a narrower version of the regular number five Jack plane. Stanley produced these for manual training schools and young boys that were learning to be carpenters and furniture makers. The idea was they needed to learn on a plane that was the same length as a number five, but smaller and lighter. Now, moving up from the number five, Stanley made the five and a half, another one of these weird fractional sizes. And again, Stanley was probably competing with Scottish infill plane makers. In addition to their really highly regarded smoothers, infill makers also made a style of plane called a panel plane. It was a longer, wider plane, sort of similar to a jack, but furniture makers would set them up for a very fine cut, and they were usually used for smoothing out large panels in really high-end cabinet work. Stanley wanted a piece of this lucrative market, so they came out with a five and a half. It was the same size as a panel plane, had the same width and a lot of the same weight, and it could be set up very finely, so it could do the same job. Panel planes didn't really catch on in the United States because they're not really a part of our woodworking history, but they're super popular in Great Britain, and you can still find a lot of five and a halves there, where they're also popular just as a general bench plane size. A lot of people love these. I've never really used mine very often, but it's not because it's a bad tool. It's just personal preference. Now, the last and largest plane in the Jack four plane family is the number six. And this one is definitely the stepchild of the Stanley family. This is one of the few times they might have sort of messed up in their logic. They took the basic wooden four plane and more or less copied the size of it exactly on the number six. The problem with that is that a four plane that's made in wood is a very aggressive tool used to taking off big chunks of wood, but because it's made out of wood, it's very, very light. If you make the same plane out of metal, it is super heavy. I have tried to use this plane as a rough stock removal tool and it wears me out way too quickly. It's one of the few times that I think Stanley really didn't design the plane well for the task. But here's the thing about the number six. It's really close to a lot of other useful sizes. So for instance, if you wanted a five and a half, but you couldn't find one, you could take a number six and set it up to work pretty much exactly the same way. If you need a long jointer plane, but you can't afford one, a six will work as a jointer. I've done it, and it's really not a problem. So if you're looking for a rarer size Stanley plane, Grab a number six, they work great and they're cheap. I did a whole video a couple years ago only about number sixes. I will link to that down in the description. Our last family of planes is the big boys, the jointers. Or more appropriately, the number seven, which Stanley referred to as a triplane, and the number eight, which is technically a jointer plane. In practical terms, there isn't a huge difference between a triplane and a jointer plane, and there isn't a huge difference between these two planes either. The number seven is a little bit shorter, narrower, and lighter, 
and the number eight is bigger in every respect. Now, anybody looking at these two planes is gonna say, my God, Rex, look at the condition of those things. Why aren't they restored yet? Well, the honest answer is I don't use super long planes very often in my work. Even though I work primarily by hand, I just don't need them that much. And when I do, I really prefer wooden jointer planes. These are really heavy and I find them kind of clumsy. But for most woodworkers, the real question is, do I need both of these or which one should I get? The answer is they both do more or less the same thing. And I recommend that you grab whatever you can find and whatever you can afford. They're too similar for it to make a huge difference. If you followed this whole video, you've got a pretty good grasp on what all the different models of Stanley planes are for. But you still might be saying, hey, Rex, I'm a beginner. What do I actually buy? Well, here's my recommendations for which planes to buy and in which order. I would start off with a plain old Stanley number four. People refer to these as smoothing planes, but there's so much more than that. An adjustable metallic plane like this is incredibly versatile and it'll handle a ton of different bench tasks throughout the whole day. If you follow my super basic woodwork for humans series, you've seen me build a bunch of pieces of furniture using nothing but a number four. It's totally doable. Now, once you have a decent number four and that's taken care of, the next thing you want is a plane for rough stock removal. And of course, a great choice for that is the number five, another classic plane, super versatile, a million uses in the shop. You can buy an inexpensive one like this Victor and set it up the way I have here with a very cambered iron and a wide mouth. And that'll take care of rough stock preparation or planing a three quarter inch board down to a half inch board. This plane will handle it if you don't have machinery in your shop. Once you've got these two sorted out, you probably are going to want one long plane. I don't think long planes are as important in a hobbyist shop as they would have been in a professional shop back in the day, but if you work totally by hand, you have to have at least one long plane. A seven or an eight or a wooden jointer, these are all great choices, but if you don't have a lot of options or if you're strapped for cash, I can honestly recommend a number six as an affordable option in a jointing plane. I've used these for jointing. I used to carry one to a shop that I worked at. They work totally fine. And what's funny about this is we've gone all the way through all 11 models of Stanley Plane, and <laughs> here we are back at the beginning. Jack, jointer, and smoother. It really sort of does come down to those three planes, or at least those three families of plane. Now, we have made some advances in the last two or 300 years, and there are some modern touches you might add to your collection. Once you have these three sorted out, the next thing that I would add would be a low angle plane. This is the Stanley Sweetheart low angle plane. And I honestly think these are really excellent. They're not the incredible plane that everybody seems to think they are, but they'll handle a lot of jobs around the shop. If you need to joint or level something that's too small for your jointer, your low angle jack will get the job done. They can also work okay as a smoothing plane. They're a little bit long for that, but they work and they're amazing as a shooting plane. I do a lot of hand sawing, which means I shoot a lot of end grain on the shooting board and I've never found anything that's close to being as good as my low angle jack as an affordable shooter. These only cost a little over a hundred dollars. They're made well, I've had this one for like a year and it's still going great. I can honestly recommend one of these once you have your three basics already sorted out. When I first started woodworking, I was really overwhelmed by all the hand planes out there. I didn't know which ones I should get, so I just got all of them. And frankly, I ended up with a lot of planes that I never use, and they just collect dust. I made this video because I'm hoping to save some of the beginners out there some of that trouble and some of that expense. Hopefully, as you watch this video, you figured out which planes you need and which ones you don't. Definitely start with a number four, but if you decide you want something heavier and wider, the number four and a half is always out there waiting for you. No matter what you want, Stanley made something to try and fit the bill. And before I go, I always have to thank my patrons on Patreon. They're the ones who make it possible for me to write and film and edit these videos and then just give them away for free. They're also an amazing community of craftspeople. It's a community that I'm really proud to be a part of. If you'd like to be a part of that community, go on over to patreon.com slash Rex Kruger and check out the early access rewards, discussion forum, and other extras that I have for the people who make these videos possible. And wait, before you go, I have to dedicate this video to my seven-year-old daughter, Stella, who has been sitting 10 feet over there, quietly coloring the entire time I've been here talking about these plans. She knows daddy has to work and she's been perfectly quiet the whole time 
which is not easy. She even made us a drawing of a hand plane. And look, look what it says across the top. Stella, with love to all. Kiddo, I couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for watching.